Let's play a game. Which of these two components or code snippets is the best practice? Is it option A or is it B? That's right, it's B. Because B is a component that can be reused across the app. And if you make changes to this component, all layouts or components that use this component will be updated as well. Not only is it clean, but it'll also save you a ton of time. Now, if you picked option A, I don't really know what to tell you. What I can tell you, however, is that the subscribe button is actually one of the best practices. So you should try clicking on it. Very well said, Richard. Thanks for that. Now, reusability is great, but what if you want to reuse the structure of a component and let different parts of the app fill in the content? Take this button component as an example once again. It looks the same, but it has different labels or text depending on where it's used. This can be done using slots, and slots allows you to inject content either in HTML or raw text. But let's step it up. What if you want your button to optionally include an icon? And for that, we can use named slots, or even conditionally render slots if the content is provided. This lets you keep the button super flexible while staying DRY or do not repeat yourself. Now imagine combining slots with a properly abstracted component. You get something that adapts to different contexts without duplicating logic. Now speaking of logic, one of the biggest mistakes I see is cramming all your logic directly into the component. Huh? And while this works, it can quickly turn into a mess. You get bloated set of functions, copy pasted across different components. And with this, it's preferable to use Composable. A Composable is a function that leverages Views Composition API to reuse stateful logic. For example, we can build a composable named useCounter that handles incrementing and decrementing a number across your app. I like to keep all my composable in a dedicated composables folder. It keeps your logic separate from components and make everything easier to access and reuse. And here in our example, we set up a reactive count and expose two methods, increment and decrement. And then in our component, we can simply import the composable and use the count and the two methods. This will make it much easier to reuse and refine it if needed. Now let's talk about props and emits. So often, I see developers overuse props or underuse emits, but both are very powerful tools for communication between components. So let's say we have a modal component. You probably want to control when it opens or closes. Instead of hard coding logic inside, the clean way is accept a visible prop and emit a close event when the user clicks the X button or the cancel button. This keeps your model component decoupled and reusable, while still allowing the parent component stay in control. And this is gonna blow your mind. Remember Composables? Imagine if multiple components or pages across the app needs to display a model or a pop-up message. For example, the login page, or your product page, or your checkout page. You could extract that logic into a Composable. So instead of creating a brand new ref and two methods, every single time, you just do something like this. You import and use it. You know what, I agree that is very cool, but give me more something advanced, a little more important. Now let's move on to something more important, validation of props. So often I see components that accept props without any type checking. So when someone accidentally passes a number instead of a string, your app won't complain, it'll just silently fail. Now let's take a look at this example. We have a link component that expects a URL and a label. Both of these are expected to be a string, but if there's no validation, your component will still render. Just not how you expect. To avoid this issue, it's always best to use prop validation to ensure that you're passing the correct value or type. With a composition API, it's super straightforward. Instead of manually defining prop types like this, you can use define props with a TypeScript interface. And now your code editor will immediately warn you if you're passing the wrong type even before you run the app. Now, these best practices that I mentioned in this video are just the tip of the iceberg. From composables, to reusable components, to slots, to prep validation and TypeScript. These are all just tools that will help you write cleaner and maintainable code. But obviously, there's more. There are things like state management, performance optimizations, and testing. We haven't even scratched the surface. Now, if this video helped you level up your Vue.js skills, make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe and let us know in the comments below what you want to see next. Thanks for watching. My name is Bernard and I will see you in the next one.